the home and away rat, uh, matches with 72 points and they get the rest next week. Hawthorne, Carlton, Collingwood and Fitzroy making up the five and the same. At VFL Park, first up, here's Hawthorne's Ken Judge. And it looks good, it is a goal! What a goal! Now his teammate, considered by many Burn. best on Burn. ground, That's Michael Byrne. Couldn't get clear, once again it's Byrne. Getting around those players like a little player. Long shot for goal, it's got a bad kick, it's a goal! Goals. To the Blues, Fraser Murphy, Murphy with a reads shot. it beautifully. And he's put it through the little rover. And he's in front. The Blues half Locked forward, Mark McClure. His shot is there. Sellers has kicked it, I think. Yes, he has. Fourth on to the ball. Carlton, Warren Ralph. Well Eight goals yesterday. Seven. A superb He's performance. Here's one of them. Goals. Let's see what he can do with this one. Oh, it's not a bad sort of a kick either. There's goal number eight. They're looking out. The man they couldn't Jones stop, Robert Di Pier Domenico. Di Pier Domenico and Dill fight it out. It's Di Pier Domenico. Beautiful play on the boundary line as he kicks the ball long. What's this one? Oh my goodness! Was that a goal? Yes, it is a goal. Unbelievable. Up there for Matthews and completing them, front, Lee Matthews of Hawthorne. Pass two of them. They both fall over. This gives him a chance to score the goal, and he does. Oh, some great goals there to our panel now for their assessment headed by Peter McKenna. Pete? Well, Bobby, some tremendous finals, uh, typical finals goals, really. Were, it's like the Warren Ralph's uh, goal. He really lined the ball up. Uh, he, when he got clear, he straightened up and from the you know the angle. But uh, the, Matthews, the way he dived on the ball and saw the two Carlton players just Fantastic. keep typical look, going where, he, where they thought he was going to put it. And it looked an easy goal in the finish, but the way he won it. But the way Di Pietro Minico lifted it, uh, that goal and one when he came through the centre and hand passed on, I, they were team lifting efforts. And I'd give it to Di Pietro Minico for his team lifting. What about you, Sam? Well, I couldn't agree with Bob Moore. I honestly thought Ralph's was better executed kick because it was deliberate, but for sheer just lifting the ability to lift a side through inspiration and kicking that goal, you wouldn't go past Dippy Domenico. But I just did think Burns and Fraser Murphy's couple of goals were good and also McClure's. It was a nice snap. But Ralph would just get edged out uh, for mine by Dippy Domenico. Yes, well, you're both good judges because uh, Robert DiPier Domenico wins the $100 Midas goal of the day, a tremendous uh, team-inspiring goal, and, of course, that goes in for the goal of the year competition, a $5,000 award judged by the World of Sport panel at the end of the year. Now, have a look at uh, Bertie DiPier Domenico. He knocks it on away from Bruce Duell, around the boundary line, gets the bounce of the ball, ducks back, then onto the right foot, right on the boundary line. And let's look at Mark in action here now. Eyes on the ball, as the two experts here explain. Got the one hand. Before a knee injury cut him down in round 13, the youngster was the sensation of the season. Good kick. Salmon's there with Byrne. Byrne well placed. Oh, Salmon! What a great mark that was! I think Byrne felt he had it. Stephen Reynoldson of Geelong. The high-flying cat stretches himself up and sideways in a big pack. Beside him is Mossop. Black ball right down to that square. Up there, rattles in a beautiful leap. That was a magnificent leap. Reynolds has been a star. He's obliterated McClure. Jeff Southby of Carlton. Salmon proved a problem for all fullbacks, but the veteran blue finds an unconventional way. Salmon and Salmon and Southby. Oh! Oh, superb! Ennis Banks of Collingwood. With fierce determination for the ball, he crashes to the ground in spectacular fashion. Broke away from Edwards, which doesn't necessarily indicate... Banks! Fantastic mark! Paul Vanderhaar of Essendon. An object lesson in keeping eyes on the ball for a mark which was never his. Brown dives at it. Williams is the man who kicked it high in the air. Graham Allen's got the chance. The gallant Vanderhaar takes a screamer. That was a sensational mark. At no stage did he deserve to take that it was absolute courage and class that's all it was michael reeves of fitzroy while a big pack jostles he bursts into shot covering nearly as much laterally as vertically oh what a leap by reeves an absolutely sensational leap by michael reeves well they won't come much better than that
So make your pick from the best six and send your entries to Mark of the Year, ABC Sport, Box 1279L, GPO Melbourne, 3001. Nothing in the envelope, but on the back, your answer and your address, and you'd be surprised how many forget. Now for Victorian viewers, the goals of the year. Michael Conlon of Fitzroy, the Lions' bustling half-forward, kicked many goals with bulldozing like this. Almost marked by Conlon. Michael Tuck of Hawthorne. Notice the Hawk veteran at centre half back here, then spinning through the centre for a marvellous goal. From Richards, Colin Robertson takes it at centre half back. Up towards Curran now, from behind is Moore. Dixon's there as well. Beautifully done, Michael Tuck. He's free now. He can fire for goal from about uh, 50 metres out. It might bounce through. It has. Fine play, Michael Tuck. One of the best passages for the afternoon. Michael Turner of Geelong. The cat missed their skipper's influence late in the season. They could have done with the determination shown here. Look at him go through and like a bullet. Michael Turner dodges brilliantly and what an effort. What a magnificent piece of football. A real captain Again, Michael Conlon of Fitzroy. Nobody likes a goal more and you don't want to get in his way as Trevor Barker finds out. Ball still in, Conlon delightfully to Wilson, over his head back to Conlon, who ran out and then came back in. Mickey Conlon! Oh. Darren Mullane of Collingwood. In one of his first games of VFL football, he shows the poise which made him a VFA club captain at 19. Oh, brilliant interception. Mullane will kick a goal. That was beautiful. And he does it. Doug Barwick of Fitzroy, another first-year player in the VFL, the former Tasmanian shows similarities to teammate Conlon. Short into Barwick. Barwick and Elphinston. Barwick does well to keep it in and does brilliantly to keep it in. Play of the day, Doug Barwick. He'll go all the way. Look at the pace of the man. Finals ever. Collingwood and Fitzroy locked in a battle for final survival. With the results, top finals action on Sevens Big League. Thank you, John Deeks, and a very good evening, everyone, and welcome to the special edition of Sevens Big League, the history-making elimination final at the MCG between Collingwood and Fitzroy. From a spectator's point of view, and indeed that of the Victorian Football League, the Sunday game was certainly a winner, with over 73,000 fans passing through the turnstiles. Going into the game, Fitzroy was certainly the form side. They had what six on end to make the five, while during the season, each side had recorded a win over each other. In the finals, however, the Lions have a poor record at the MCG. Since their last premiership in 1944, they'd played 11 finals at the cricket ground and they'd won only two. Indeed, they hadn't won there in September since beating Carlton by a point in the 1952 semi-final. Tonight, our replay begins at the two-minute mark of the first quarter. And with me in the commentary box, Lou Richards and Bob Skilton. <laughs> Yes, uh, Clark and Quinlan were having uh, words before and uh, that was what the roar came from the crowd and it's interesting to note that uh, Abernathy looks to be playing at centre half back uh, with the Phyllis picking up Pert and Abernathy picking up side bottom. Out of range, picking up the ball, spins out of the pack beautifully, drives it up there towards the full fourth position. Andrews got the Evo, he goes after it again, they go down. Finally it's picked up here now by Burke. Burke and Fitzroy drives it out wide to chance here now. Oh, there's Bruce takes the mark. Nearly caught one that time from Jeremy. Nearly. Well, not, didn't quite connect. Over to Richard Osborne. Osborne with a hand pass. Over to Gotts. Fitzroy away and running. A long kick up there towards Quinlan. Couldn't hold the mark. It hits the deck. Collingwood to clear the ball through Mullane. It comes out. Now it's not Mullane. It's Abernathy. Now it's Mullane picking it up out there. At half uh, back or towards the wing position. A pass. It's a good one. And the mark taken here by McMullen. This is McMullen. I'm a youngster. I think this is his third game. The ball back across the front of goals. Andrews has got it. Now he caught by off on the, on the shoulder. Oh, he could have been a bit lucky, but I thought it might have been a mark. Well, Ronnie Andrews was a sensation last week, kicking a couple of goals and also had a hand in a couple more. Yes, well, I, I think I would have the mark. the mark, most yeah. certainly, but uh, Andrews doesn't care whether it's mark or free kick, he's still having a shot at goal. Well, Ron Andrews from about uh, 35 metres out, not the most accurate kick in the world, but see what he can do with this one. There it is on its way. 
the pad. And it's a goal. And possibly the training of Peter McKenna could have helped that. So it's one goal, six points. Collingwood to Fitzroy yet to score. Well, as the Collingwood defence has settled down, Abernathy has gone out to pick up Pert. And on replay we watch. At least I would have played the mark. Except maybe Reeves had a hand to it first, Bob. Well, they both did together, in my, in my opinion. No, I think watching it again, it might have been a good decision by the umpire. Sevens Big League from the MCG. We're approaching the four-minute mark now of the first quarter. Collingwood one goal to Fitzroy yet to score. There's the bounce. Rendell up against Close. It's knocked out of range. A long kick over the half-forward line. Players set themselves. Take oh! Now it. oh, he's called play on again. He's going to ball it up. I don't know if that was a marker, that could be disputable, that one. I think possibly he may not have held it long enough, but it uh, did oh, come oh, straight oh. through. You've got a whole chest mark, whether it's one hand or not. That was the chest mark, Bob, was a bit lower, wasn't it? Still in Collingwood's attacking zone, the ball booted away by Thornton up towards centre field. His opposite number four is Reigns. Lurkin overruns the ball, but the chance is for Parrish now as Dacos uh, tries to pursue him, but he won't catch him. Gotch takes the hand pass in the practice wicket area. Now he gets clear. Long hand pass out and torn uh, out to Turner. Turner at right centre wing, just about ran out of bounds with the ball. Quinlan in front, can't take the mark. Harris, long shot at goal for Fitzroy. That's their first goal, I think, for the day. Or will it be a mark for Phillips? The mark, Pete. Yes, it is. He's played the mark for Phillips. So Collingwood starting the better of the two sides at the moment. Phillips goes straight down the ground. Tony Shaw, oh, over the back. Good mark. Has he played that one to Fitzroy's uh, peak? And I think he might have. No. Side bottom getting underneath the ball. Strong grab. Troy supporters, I don't think, too happy with that decision. Side bottom, good long kick. Of course, he's looking to Quinlan, and he's in front. Super boot, has he got it? No, they're not playing him this afternoon. Well, I'll tell you what, that was just about a mark. You've got to earn them today. There's about three they've let go, but if they're consistent, it doesn't yes. matter, Bob. Well, watch on replay again. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> I think I would have failed it. <laughs> Players found a free kick to Collingwood on the shoulder. It will be going to Pope or Taylor. I think it might be Taylor, Pete. No, it's going to Cloak. Taylor was, uh, you're right, he's holding the back of his head. He's looking for Tony Shaw, and Tony Shaw takes the mark at left half-back flank. He's been a pretty busy player so far. Shaw looking for Richardson, and Richardson takes the mark in front of Gotts. Tried to play on, did he? Umpire said no, he hadn't gone over the mark, and the 15-metre penalty is the end result. Richardson at left half-forward. Tries to get around Gotch. Williams strong grab, play on says the umpire, he does, long shot at goal by the Collingwood skipper, I think is there, it's a goal! Great start by the Magpies at the MCG, Collingwood two goals, Fitzroy yet to score in the elimination final. Yes, and Mark Williams really showing, the, the, well, that, it is the way that Williams plays all of the time, he's a great mark, never takes his eyes off the ball, and the minute he hit the ground he was off and running and to finish it off, a very dangerous player up forward. 12 points the difference in the elimination final and what a crackerjack start for the Magpies. Just over six and a half minutes gone. Coming with 12 points to Fitzroy yet to score Rendell. Umpires found a free kick and he'll go to the big uh, Fitzroy ruck from at centre field. So he goes for the long kick out towards the half forward flank. Players set themselves. Abernathy picks it up. Goes for the long kick back towards centre half forward. Believe you me, it is a long kick. Banks in front. Punched out. Rendell. Go, Mullane goes down. Picked up by uh, Banks. A hand pass out to Tony Shaw out there on the wing position. And back it goes again to Banks. Hooks the ball back there on a mark to uh, Gay Shaw. And he'd be about uh, 50 metres out from goal. Short pass. Dangerous. Hits the deck. In goes Dacos, he caught one there, couldn't get clear, he goes after it again, falls on top of the ball, and the umpire will ball it up about uh, 60 mil, 50 metres out from the Collingwood goal. Collingwood, two goals, 12 points to Fitzroy, yet to score. Seven and a half minutes gone of the first quarter. This is the elimination final for 1984 on the big league. Knocked out by Rendell. Chance for Mullane to knock it back to range. Usually goes for the long kick, and that's no exception. Up it goes towards Williams again. He's got his mark. And as Bob Skelton said, he's a very solid mark for his size. That's for his second goal. And he's only about uh, 15 metres out from goal. No stage once again. That was a perfect example for youngsters. Eye on the ball right throughout. Waiting on uh, Williams. From about 15 metres out there. She is on its way. What's he done with it? It's a goal, so Collingwood off to a great start. Three goals, 12 points. 
to uh, Fitzroy yet to score into this quarter by eight and a half minutes. It was a great start by Collingwood with Jeff Raines, as you call a long kick. Too much strength by Mark Williams there. Uh, already proving a danger up forward with two goals. 18 points the difference. We're only playing nine minutes in the first term and Collingwood looking the good so far. Can Fitzroy make it seven straight wins? The pressure certainly on them. Rendell gets the tap out but can't find a rover. Shaw is there. Onto Richardson. Richardson looks for range. Can't get the gather in. And finally it's Ruse for Fitzroy getting them clear up towards their half forward line. A good knock on for Fitzroy by Perth. Collingwood defence has done pretty well so far. Gotch burrows in, doesn't come out with the ball. And umpire Peter Cameron has decided on a bounce, I think, at centre-half forward for Fitzroy. Uh, already Burke has been shifted away from Williams. Worry going across onto him. Well, good move because he's picked two goals. I think we can't argue with that one. Shaw sure, sockets it off the ground. Mullane burrows in. No one getting the ball out. And finally, umpire Peter Cameron decides on a bounce just as it gets uh, handed out to Pert. And so a ball up still, centre-half forward for Fitzroy. 18 points in favour of Collingwood. Cloak. Oh, he just about gave that one to Turner. In towards centre field. Rendell, a clever tap back, but he can't find a rover. Richardson off the ground, gets it to Dacos. Dacos in turn goes for a hand pass, and here's a chance for young McMullen. He's only played three games, up towards full forward. The bounce. It might bounce through, it has! Oh, what a goal! Collingwood, the Magpies are late at the MCG. Peter, I think it's appropriate to say now, when you're hot, you're hot, and when you're not, you're not. you've been missing. All hit. 3UZ. of any moment with Minty's new pocket size pack. If your diet is inadequate, your body could send out a call for vitamin B. Baraka. Baraka. Like a force pulsating through the bloodstream, firing a high dose of vitamin B throughout the body. Baraka. Baraka. Not only a high dose of seven B group vitamins, but vitamin B plus a great big burst of 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C together in one delicious fizzy drink. Baraka. Baraka. Now in 30-day economy pack. you've been missing. All hit. 3UZ. Two young girls at summer camp. Strong-willed, independent and desperate to win a simple contest. It's whoever gets the guy first. Tatum O'Neill and Christy McPickle. Little Dumb. The hilarious Sunday movie premiere tonight at 8.30. 15 minutes into the first quarter now. Collingwood leading by 24. Long hand pass. Up towards centre wing. Osborne is there, taps it well, he gets around the lane, fires it onto Pert. Pert looking for someone to make a lead, none there, so he kicks the ball long up towards Clinton again, still can't take the mark. Loose ball, half forward line, Parrish, hurried hand pass, now a chance for Fitzroy, Logan, long shot at goal, is that there first? I think it's there, at last the line, Pert runs through, it took 16 minutes. Well, that's the one they needed after going so badly, Bob. It might lift the team's morale a little bit. Yes, it, uh, when you put your first goal on the board, it does give you a chance to steady and realise that uh, you've got a hand in this game as well. And uh, Fitzroy made the 
full advantage of a couple of loose hand passes by Collingwood there, but I must admit there wasn't much that the Collingwood defenders could do. Just on the 16-minute mark, knocked out by Rindell, dominating those centre bounces. Out comes Range with the ball, finally picks it up, a hand pass coming out to Mullane. And back it goes to Ebeneth, that's kick number seven as he drives the ball over the centre-half forward position. Off the top of the pack, Laurie standing down. On guard, finally gets it out to that wing position, picked up by Logan, who kicked their last goal. A hand pass back to Gotch, over it goes again to Graham Osborne. Osborne's kick is up there looking for Quinlan in the back position, couldn't hold that mark. Turner comes in, runs into a bit of trouble, has a fresh air shot. Quinlan's grab but still gets a kick towards the goals. But he's off target, it could be nearly a free kick to Fitzroy's little uh, Harris, but the umpire didn't see that. So it's Fitzroy, one goal, two eight points to Collingwood, 4 one 25. 16 and a half minutes gone of the first quarter. And this is really quick football. Ah, oh, good mark, and he's playing a fair game out there, Turner, too, Bob. So he's well on top of Barham today. Out towards Wilson and Turner of Collingwood. The ball hits the deck, as they go now for uh, Burke. He's grabbed, the ball hits the ground. Well played by Turner, but a chance here now for Fitzroy. As we see Turner again, straightens up, fires. But uh, Turner doing a great job as up target that time and it's through for one point. He's had six kicks, Turner. 17 minutes gone. 4-1 to 1-3. And the Magpies got off to a tremendous start, but they're coming back to the field a little bit now. Oh, there's a great mark. What a beautiful mark to Perth. He streaks away from the pack as he fires at the goals. It deserves it. And it is a goal. Great goal. What a beautiful goal by Perth. Well, if there's ever anything that's going to lift the team in a... They have uh, been shell-shocked early in the piece by Collingwood's four goals. Watch on replay now. Perth getting rid of Phillips with the uh, oh, a great piece of football. And look at the way he responds. A good piece of shepherding by young Osborne. And a lovely kick from Perth. Well, they're regaining their poise now, Pete. They certainly are. Ten points the difference now after Kurt kicked Fitzroy's second goal. 25 plays 15 at the 18-minute mark of the quarter. The crowd certainly finding voice. Folk tries to crash his way through. Could have been penalised. The umpire calls play on. Now it's a ball-up decision. It's his umpire Nash. And that will take place about 10 metres inside Fitzroy's attacking zone. Well, it's pretty quick football by both sides here. And uh, it's a matter of who makes the most mistakes uh, to get the opportunity to break clear. Yes, Fitzroy got off to a bad start. Can they overcome that? Carlton couldn't yesterday. Knocked down by it was Fitzroy's uh, Rendell. Now a chance for the Lions again. Side bottom using some rough out tactics. Turner. Up the centre field, Osborne. Had it taken away from him. Stolen by Reigns. Reigns a long kick as usual up towards half forward. Shaw looking for on the shoulder and he could get it too. Yeah, no, right. no, says the umpire and he calls play on. Laurie. Out the centre wing, Rindle on his own. He'll go the long shot down towards Quinlan. Can he find him this time? Super Boots still can't take a grab. And Turner content to cut the ball over. Was it deliberate? Of course, they had vivid memories last year when Michael Tuck was given a free kick and Fitzroy did that in the last quarter here. Hmm, very similar. Make up your own mind on that one. Knocked down by Perth. Burke. Had it and then lost it. That could almost be construed as in the back. The umpire, I think, has seen it that way. It will be a free kick to Dacos. Dacos at right back pocket for Collingwood. Collingwood champ goes for the torpedo. Yes, good mark to Rendell. No free kick to Collingwood, says the umpire. Well, it was in the back, Pete. Dennis Banks to take the free kick. But Troy certainly not getting the umpiring decisions at the moment. Burke seemed to have it covered, then lost it. Pad uh, paddles it out to Osborne. Osborne now, that's Richard Osborne getting clear. Long kick up towards centre half forward, trying to find Quinlan. Two hands to it. Now they're roving a better Fitzroy. Wilson has a shot at goal. Is it there? Yes, it bounces through. The Lions coming back at the MCG in the elimination final. And the scoreboard 4 1 to 3 3, four points in it. Well, we'll be back after this break with the all important third quarter action next on Sevens Big League. Announcing the new Holden Astra. Giving up CD bars and burn wheels at lights. I'm glad I'm civilized now. I'm glad I'm civilized now. Giving up CD bars and burn wheels at lights. I'm glad I'm civilized now. 
giving up platform shoes and marks his plan and his blues. I'm glad I'm civilized now. I think I'll enjoy more Australian views. I'm glad I'm civilized now. New Holden Astra, the civilized hatch. There's no other store like David Jones. They're the best in every way. They've got the best departments, the best attention. And this is what they'd like to say. Why don't you? Odors in the air, the problem could be in the carpet or curtains. Now you can fight odors wherever they're hiding with new dry and fresh from Aerozone. Look, an ordinary air freshener sprays wet, but dry and fresh sprays dry. And because it's dry, you can freshen button, carpet, even furniture without staining. With dry and fresh, you can freshen up the whole house. The first dry spray air and fabric deodorizer, new from Aerozone. You are now travelling at over 300 kilometres per hour, and you're driving on Dunlop. This race-proven technology has now engineered Dunlop's ultimate passenger car tyre. A steel-belted radial that literally pumps wet roads dry. The new generation Dunlop Grand Prix. Dunlop, indisputably number one in tyre technology. Born a princess, her life should have been a modern-day fairy tale. Simmons Big League from Elimination Final. Now at the MCG, Collingwood leading by five points, ten and a half minutes into the third term. It's up to the stage of the match. I'm surprised he's had that many. Banks takes it from the boundary throw-in. Puts it up towards the pocket. Oh, here's a chance for Williams, or will it bounce through? It won't. McMullen will get there first. Turns around. Can he make it two? He's already kicked one. That's a great goal by the youngster. And Collingwood go further ahead. The scoreboard, seventh big lead from the MCG. Collingwood 11 4 70. Fitzroy 8 12 60 points. It was good play by Dennis Banks, and that was a kick of Banks. As we watch on replay now, the kick from Banks, McMullen. Almost missed it, but he recovered well and uh, showing great skills. Uh, lovely left foot snap by young McMullen. Ten points the difference as we approach the 12-minute mark of the uh, third quarter. Can the Magpies make the margin bigger or can Fitzroy bounce back, which they have all day? Fellows against Rendell, and Fellows not doing a bad job either. Knocked out by Rendell, Tony Shaw lifting his game as it goes back to Phillips. A left foot kick out towards the wing position. A chance for Reigns, tap that one down. Finally it's a hand pass coming out from Reeves, over to Logan. Got a paddock to run and goes for a short pass. It falls short. Oh, he's grabbed play on the umpire set. We see Phillips go for a long hand pass. Tony Shaw once again. Out there at half back, a pass to Reigns. Colling would go back into attack, a long kick. And that is a long kick up there towards Williams. Fly off the top of the pack. Dacos, Dacos and Thornton. Dacos fires. Oh, well tackled free by kick, Thornton. Free kick. Might be a free kick, but I thought he tackled him well. What else could he do? There's a bit of a box on now, but it'd be silly for Collingwood players to give free kicks away here. And watch on replay. Oh, he's grabbed him by the foot. No doubt about that. It was a gamble worth taking. Yeah, there. That's right. So Dacos... Runs around, fires at the goals. And it's a goal to Collingwood, or the umpire calling Day Costa to go back and have his kick. Collingwood in front by 10 points as we approach the 13 and a half minute mark. 70 plays 60. And Thornton, who's been on top of Day Costa, he's been his tag. Now he runs around, fires at the goals the second time. 
And that's another goal. So the Magpies have hit the front by 16 points and goal number one today, Goss. But don't start celebrating yet, fellas, because this Fitzroy side can bounce back. 12-4, 76, Collingwood for Fitzroy. Eight goals, 12-60. So Fitzroy not uh, carrying on in this term as they did in that uh, second quarter. Uh, their play is nowhere near as decisive as it uh, should be. And up, up forward, uh, Perth uh, lowering his colours to Phillips. Uh, Phillips well on top across the half-back line. And uh, in this uh, third term, Tony Shaw is cutting the pieces around the packs. 16 points the difference. Knocked down by Fellows on that occasion, who got up limping from that scrimmage. Richardson has the ball, the umpire says though, I'd like it, and it will be a bounce just wide of the centre circle. 14 and a quarter minutes gone, third quarter, Collingwood leading by 16. Rendell fires it over the top, there's no one there though. Osborne doesn't get a favourable bounce. Now it's Pert, finally getting clear of Phillips, but he hasn't done that too often. Still Quinlan can't take a mark. Gotch doesn't get the run of the ball, Abernathy burrows in, so too does Turner. Umpire Peter Cameron will bounce the ball about 35 metres out from the Fitzroy goal. And Collingwood once again looking the goods. And after Fitzroy got on top late in the second quarter. Knocked down by Fellows. Abernathy. Short kick to Loken. Oh, a hand pass that was terrible, really. Harris seemed to get one a little bit too high. Abernathy diving on the ball. Finally, I think it's Loken getting up. He got scragged, did he? Yes, it's a free kick. And Logan to take the free for Fitzroy. He kicked their first goal, interestingly. It was at about the same time of the first quarter, the 16-minute mark, when they got their opening goal. And he, they bounced back after that, Pete. They, they did. They? Can they do it again? He's on the opposite side of the ground this time. Right half forward, he kicked the first one from left half forward. Get the distance. The accuracy not there, I feel. One behind. So Logan not too happy with that. And the score now in favour of Collingwood, 15 points. 76 plays 61. Peter McCormack has so far kept Quinlan goalless. Many have done that this year. That's a good mark to Scott. Mark Scott came out in the second quarter at about the 20-minute mark and kicked two goals. Handing a bit of height to the Fitzroy forward line. I think they need some mobility at the moment rather than anything else. Pert gets clear, shoots from 20 metres out. That looks OK. It's a goal. Fitzroy bounced back again. Perth second. And seventh big league scoreboard. 12-4-76 Collingwood. Fitzroy 9-13-67. That was exactly what uh, Fitzroy needed at that stage. As on replay, we see Perth put it through. Uh, Quinlan again going for a mark, but he's in the hands of the trainers at the moment. And it uh, uh, doesn't quite look as well as he might be, Bernie Quinlan. Well, he could have a killer his uh, heel trouble, Bob. Nine points the difference, just over the 16 and a half minute mark of this third quarter. Knocked out by Fellows. Banks gets the tap down, a hand pass coming out that time. As we see uh, the ball coming out the ruse, he couldn't get clear. Banks tries to get it clear. Now it's uh, Mullane with a hand pass back to Shaw. By golly, he's been a dangerous player this quarter. Over it goes to Ricky Barham, a pass to Richardson on his own. And he's got the mark at half forward, about 70 metres out from the Collingwood goal. They're in front by nine points. There's a lead. Oh, it's too far. He's got it on the line, but it'll be out of bounds on the full. And a penalty free kick to go to Loken down there. Rain just couldn't grab that one in time. Down there in the back pocket. Nine points the difference. And this has been a tremendous game. This crowd of about 75,000 have enjoyed every moment of it. Fellows! And this has been the right move to bring him on the ground, bub. Yes, Colling would have made some good moves, Lou. Uh, I felt that uh, I would have not left uh, Andrews in the back pocket, but he, he's done you know, reasonably well in holding tight, uh, the big fellow so far. Fellows over to Abernathy, fires, it's another hit the post! Hit the post. So the difference is ten points. There was the chance of a lifetime. Good play on the part of Dacos. Abernathy a little bit off target. Ten points, 77 plays, 67 as the ball comes back into play again. Out to big Rendell and Williams, he's got no hope there. I think we're giving, oh, they pounce on top of him, they get lose, they're not careful. But Rendell's played a tremendous game today, the best player on the ground. He's out there at half-back. Fitzroy trailing by 10 points. Goes for a short pass, it's OK. And it's marked here by Burke. Burke goes for the long kick. At the back is McCormick, the ball tapped to the ground. 
Finally, all this, Taylor with one in the back. And the free kick will go to Taylor down there in that back pocket position. It was a free kick all the way that time. There's a chance for Rendell again. Oh, what a guy. <laughs> I'll give him the football after the match. Finally, Ruse drives it back to centre half forward. No one can take that mark. Shaw overruns, but Taylor gets the ball back towards the centre of the ground and a mark taken here by Mullane at centre field. Mullane should go for the long kick. He's put it over centre half forward. A chance for a mark and McMullen's got it. And he'd be about 55 to 60 metres out. Plenty of Collingwood players running loose down there. Now he's found somebody. Oh, Gary Shaw is down. Dacos, well tackled by Gilly. He's had him today, Thornton. He's never let him out of his sight. And the ball finally kicked back by Ruse, and Wilson takes the mark out there on the centre wing position for Fitzroy. And Fitzroy may be a little bit lucky to get away from that because, as you mentioned, Collingwood players were running loose everywhere. But now it's Perth's turn to do just that. He's already kicked two goals. He'll try and find Quinn. And he's at last got a mark. Let's take a long time. A good play on the part of Quinn. He balked him beautifully, Bob. There's a good play by Pert, but uh, Quinlan stood his ground well, uh, used his body to perfection, and McCormick had no chance with that one. Quinlan yet to kick a goal. We've been playing 20 minutes in the third quarter. He's kicked four points. Superboot, I think, finally has converted. First goal to Quinlan for the match, and a valuable one for Fitzroy. They come within four points. 77 plays 73 at the MCG. Pretty hard for either side to get the break, Bob. There's a full credit to uh, Ross Thornton on that occasion. Uh, he tackled Dacos well, uh, forcing Dacos to lose possession. And uh, then Fitzroy, from the back, half back line, were able to rebound the ball quickly up to Wilson on the wing. Wilson on to Pert. The finish uh, was Quinlan's goal. And the crowd certainly getting their money's worth here this afternoon. It's been a tip-top game of football, one of the best we've seen for many weeks in the Victorian Football League. Four points the difference, 20 and a half minutes got in the third quarter. The game going to CTV in Canada and ESPN in the United States. And you're watching it on a, in Australia on the Seven Network. Abernethy, Burke in front, can't take the mark. Waiting at the back is Graham Osborne. Up the half forward, Phillips in front, can't complete the mark. Reigns, just about Collingwood's most consistent player, onto Barham. Good tackle by Loken. Barham shrugs it well. Straight down the centre of the ground. Knocked away by McMullen. Richardson has the front position. Osborne again, but he can't get clear. The hand pass, a bad one. Umpire calls play on. Three Fitzroy players are there. Ruse will give a hand pass out. That's OK, and it's taken by Reeves. Reeves a pass up towards left half forward, and the mark is taken for Fitzroy by uh, Perth. Perth getting on top of Phillips. Yes, but Phillips was on top earlier in this quarter. He's gone right across goal. Fellows is too tall, gets the knock away. Quinlan onto Osborne again. The kick is short. Who's down there for Fitzroy? Not too many. Wilson, Scott gets there first. Hurried hand pass. Fitzroy fans looking for in the back. The umpire says no. Andrews passes his way through. Short pass up towards centre field, and that's OK. He's found Tony Shaw. Shaw running. In goes Ruse with the tackle. He's gone out wide to Gary Shaw. Shrugs that one. Shoots at goal. It's long, but not accurate. And through for one point. Gilly, that was great play on the part of Andrews. He did a big near Domenico, didn't he? <laughs> Five points the difference. 78 plays 73. Not quite as fast, but just as effective. 22 minutes gone. Short pass coming out here and out of Thornton. He's done a marvellous job on Dacos. The ball's short. Phillips comes right across. A hand pass coming over to Neville Shaw. The ball down there towards the forward pocket. McMullen grabbed it. Right on the boundary line, about 45 metres out from goal. This young fella's already kicked two goals. Collingwood in front by five points. McMullen coming in for his uh, third goal. There's the kick. Oh, that's a lovely kick, and the result is a goal. So the Collingwood team in front by 11 points. 84 plays, 73. Coming up next on Sevens Big League, the cutthroat final quarter. After sailing with a big crew like this, you've got to be able to turn out hot meals in a hurry. Yeah, you can cook for dinner. <laughs> That's why we can't do without our Rank Arena microwave oven from NEC. It's bigger inside than most of the others, and it cooks fast too. Rank Arena microwaves, big inside to cook a big, fuzzy oh, meal. Lovely, John. Done very well. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, we know some pretty big eaters. <laughs> Rank Arena Microwave Ovens. Bring a little onion, hello mum, it's me. I live behind the skippy, come around and see. 
Ten new veggie dishes you haven't seen before. All of them delicious and there's one thing more. They're in a sanitary vegetarian cookbook. Yes, critics all applaud it. Easy to afford it. They post a packet of the 750. Tasty 50 pounds of please. Hundreds of super recipes. Superb new sanitarium vegetarian cookbook for just a song. Details on Skippy Packs. Get the sanitarium vegetarian cookbook. Delivered to your door for 750. brushing with Colgate Fluoroguard Gel, the most proven fluoride protection a toothpaste can give. With such a good taste, kids want to brush and brush. About time! Colgate Fluoroguard Gel makes kids want to brush with the most proven protection against decay. This Monday, Tommy and Tuppence tackle their first major mystery and unravel an amazing diabolical plot of premeditated murder. A whodunit in the finest tradition. Agatha Christie's Partners in Crime, Monday at 8.30 on 7. Elimination final now, the start of the final term. Cricket ground, Fitzroy and Collingwood. Collingwood leading by four points. Knock on by Gotch. Goes straight to Phillips though. He was well on top, especially in that third quarter. Now here's a chance for the Magpies to get a quick goal. But it's Burke. Turner. Turner from right half back. Long kick. Up towards the right half forward flank for Fitzroy. The flyer is Phillips and takes another good mark. He fires out a quick hand pass to Reigns. Reigns onto Tony Shaw, who cut Fitzroy to ribbons during the third term. In towards centre field. Good tackle. The ball rebounding to Banks, though. Banks, a long hand pass. Out to the danger is Richardson at right half forward. Richardson looks for a hand pass, and that's okay. Mullane can shoot for goal. The shot is long. It's just about there. It's a wrestle in the goal free square. Kick, free kick, Pete. Cloak. Must be a free kick to Cloak. He was grabbed, and you'll see here, dragged to the ground. I don't think there's any doubt about that, Bob. No, he really laid back against Reeves almost. Uh, and I think in frustration, Reeves uh, had to hang on to him. But uh, good play. Um, and we saw Ron Andrews there just come up and congratulate Phillips who repulsed that attack. Cloak puts it through for a goal. Collingwood lead by 10 points. At the 92nd mark of the final term, Cloak hasn't had the greatest of days this afternoon. He spent a fair amount of time on the bench. But what a great start for Collingwood in the last quarter. 92 to 82. Let's watch that again. There wasn't a doubt in the world that it was a free kick to Cloak and uh, he laid back against Reeves and uh, not, not a good piece of defensive work by Reeves on that occasion. Collingwood lead by 10 points now. And they've opened up a lead in three of the four quarters so far early on. Knocked away by Rendell, down to Gotch, intercepting as Richardson, he loses out but regains it again, fires out the hand pass, Collingwood through Phillips, get clear, up towards left centre wing for the Magpies and that's a, no it's not a mark, paid to Banks. The hand pass is flicked out to Toomey. Toomey looking for one going past, can't find anybody. Has to hook it back over his head and the kick is high. In towards the centre square. Great mark taken by Ruse. Good mark to Ruse. A quick hand pass. Comes over there to Graham Osborne. He's in a bit of trouble, but now he's clear. Drives Fitzroy back into attack over their half forward line. Nearly a free kick to Fitzroy, but the umpire said play on as Wilson tries to get out. Ricky Barham falls on top of the ball. Thought that was pretty close to a free kick to Fitzroy certainly looked that way in the back didn't it a ball up at center half uh, forward for Fitzroy about 55 meters out from their goal and Collingwood in front by 10 points but there's been nothing in this game all day fellows got the tap down Barra it's finally knocked back here to Reigns and the ball tapped by Neville Shaw to his brother Tony Shaw has a chance now for Collingwood to go deep into attack through Richardson over it goes to Abernathy this uh, uh, Malena there's a long shot at goal and what's the result one point well, they're starting to move it out of that centre, Collingwood, very well indeed. There were four players running downfield then, Lou. So we see the difference now, 11 points. 
just on the three and a half minute mark of this last quarter we wait on Reeves to go for a short pass out there to Burke it's okay could have been dangerous but Burke's got the mark at half back Thornton making a move a hand pass a wild one there we see Osborne he's up into that time by Cloak finally a hand pass coming out wide there to uh, Pekin Pekin with a long hand pass out wide it's little Harris grabbing it at half forward taking a wide turn as he boots the ball across the centre half back oh there's Pert again can this fellow mark well we nearly went off the mark now he decides to have a go a long shot at goal looking for Quinlan but it's off target and it's through for one point he's taken three screamers here today just on the four minute mark 93 plays 83 in favour of Collingwood. look at that for a mark played most of his football in defence but he's found his new post the ball's knocked out there towards the centre half forward position Taylor comes in unattended back to Ricky Barham or oh, they're messing about out to uh, Toomey that's a hurried kick around there towards the wing position Mullane in front takes the mark he shows a lot of pace look at this young go as he takes the ball back over the half forward line chance now for uh, the mark to be taken by McMullen dropped it but he gets it back okay out to Abernathy a long shot at goal and there's a screamer it's a goal that's a ripper so it's Collingwood now 15-9-99 to Fitzroy 11-17-83 so I think that could well be the break Lou uh, in every quarter Collingwood have looked uh, the better side early in the piece they've got the jump on Fitzroy and as we said at the three quarter time it'd be nice to uh, get a 15 points or so break and uh, Collingwood right now with exactly 16 points uh, break and that could be I'm not saying the game's over for one moment but I think they're on top 16 points the difference, 99 to 83 at the five minute mark of the final quarter. Collingwood looking the good to Abernathy, can he do it again? Another long kick, this one travels a good 55 metres, Clove, yes, he's got it! And Collingwood fans lifting the roof off the MCG. Let's watch that again, folks, already kicked one in the final term. Just grabbed that bubble, it nearly slipped out, didn't it? That's what I think we said at half time, uh, Lou, that would have Pope full forward. Yes. Cloak, 15 metres out directly in front. The difference is 22 points at the MCG, and that's the best margin that Pong would have enjoyed since the first quarter. 105 to 83. And two goals to Cloak in this final term, doing a great job in the goal. And let's move the clock along now to the 11 minute mark of the term. Collingwood leading by 24. Well, it's about too high by Scott, the umpire said, holding the ball. Free kick to Fitzroy, right centre wing to be taken by Mark Scott. And by Neville Nash coming in to have a couple of words to some of the players. Now Scott has the free kick. He's at right centre wing. Fitzroy at the 11 and a half minute mark needs some goals quickly to stay in the game. Over the top, Laurie. It's pinched by Quinlan. A short pass, side bottom, about 20 metres directly in front of goal. Well, Fitzroy still in there with a chance. They're trailing by 24 points, but he should kick this one from about... Uh, well, no more than 15 to 20 metres out from goal. Directly in front. There it is on its way. And it's a goal. So the difference now, 18 points. That's side bottom's uh, second goal. 16-11, 107. Collingwood to Fitzroy. 12-17-89. We're back to three uh, goals in the margin again. And uh, Gary Sidebottom uh, would be very happy that he made amends for his previous miss. And uh, I think Bernie Quinn on that occasion very happy that... Uh, a missed kick went straight, That's right. to, straight to the, the teammate. I said it was a good pass, Bob, it was, wasn't it? 18 points the difference. Just on 12 and a half minutes gone. And Fitzroy not out of it by a long shot because they've got plenty of fighting qualities. Knocked out that time by Fellows. Taken away by Neville Shaw. Back towards uh, Collingwood's half forward line. Picked up by Burke. It's a kick out to the wide open space. It's a Mullane and Osborne go for it. But Mullane got under that one. Osborne's grabbed. He's upended. Umpire call play on. Good play by Mullane. He's grabbed. He got one on the back. He was grabbed when he didn't have the ball. And he'll take the free kick. It was a good battle between those two young players then. Now Mullane's out there at half uh, forward. A good distance out from goal. About 70 metres. Collingwood. Carlson coming on the ground. And Gotch on the ground. Now Carlson's a fresh player. Short pass to Richardson. A dangerous one. Over it goes now to Banks. Banks back to Neville. Sure, they're messing about. Collingwood down he goes. Tries to get a hand pass back. Bit of fumbling going on by both sides. The ball comes back to Richardson now. A left foot snap at the goal. And a look at that one. Is it true? It might be a goal. It is. 
and Cullen went back in front by 24 points. That was a beautiful left foot snap. 17-11, 113, Cullen with the Fitzroy, 12-17, 89. Yes, yeah, so that's a real answer that Fitzroy did not want. And, uh, tap forward by Pekin, and uh, Richardson you can't give him any opportunities. Uh, lovely left foot snap by Mike Richardson, and the, a vital ball at Collingwood. There we go, just on 14 minutes. The ball hits the deck, pushed away by Williams. Went through the legs of Banks, dropped by Ruse. He was grabbed a hurried kick by Turner. It's a bad kick, and the mark taken here by Taylor. Short pass, out wide. And we see the mark taken there by Abernathy out there on the centre wing position. Goes for the long kick. Not a good one. It falls short. Oh, Lux of Forts. It's falling into Collingwood's lap now. As we see McMullen take the mark about 55 metres out from goal. Decides to go for the long kick up there towards Cloak and Reeves. And a Reeves. Good uh, defensive play. Finally forced it through for one point. And the Magpies have hit the front by 25 points. 17, 12, 114. To Fitzroy 12 17 89. Reeves brings the ball back into play towards the right back pocket. Trying to find Burke. A good punch away though by McMullen. And he has played a fine game. First time I've seen him. Not a bad type of player, Bob, is he? Uh, very good player. Though. Boundary throw in. Almost in the forward pocket. Cloak. He gets the front position, but it's a push out. And a free kick to the Collingwood vice captain. And Randall doesn't like the decision, but he can't do much about it now. David Clerk has already kicked two goals in this final quarter. Clerk about 60 metres out. Good kick into the goal square. Williams is the flyer. Has he got the mark? No, says the umpire. Oh, gee, that was close, Bob, wasn't it? Yes, it must have been touched in between. Uh, but uh, we'll watch on replay now. Well, Reeves did yes. have first, first I hand think to he it. might have too. So a bounce just on the kickoff line. Rendell taps it to no one in particular. Neville Shaw onto Richardson. Richardson goes back upfield. The pass is OK. It's taken by Fellows. He lines them up. Won't quite make the distance into the goal square again. Plenty of Fitzroy players are there. A loose ball. Dacos has it and then lost it. Still in play. McMullen sharks it. Has a snapshot of goal. That's the sealer for mine. And McMullen has now got four goals and Collingwood will be in the first semi-final no doubt about that the scoreboard 18-12 120 to 12-17 89 yes well uh, I don't get many better starts to a football career than that of uh, young McMullen a great piece of sharking there as he took the ball away from Fitzroy it's only a couple of weeks ago he was uh, still in the seconds and here he is four goals to his credit in his first final game 16 and a half minutes have gone, final quarter. Collingwood look to have the game in their keeping. Wilson back towards centre wing. Scott is there, clashes with Andrews. Big Ronnie keeps going. The hand pass is effective on to McMullen. McMullen fires out another hand pass. Neville Shaw at the point of the square gets it moving again to Tony Shaw. The brothers combining well. He's gone for a pass. Richardson, 25 metres out from goal marks. And Collingwood running all over Fitzroy and giving them a football lesson in this final quarter. They're running and Fitzroy have stopped to a walk. That was great play on the part of Andrews. It was, I think it was Andrews Bluff that won that there for the ball down there for them, Bob. Well, do you think uh, Scott playing up on the wings uh, a help at all to Fitzroy? I think so. Richardson shoots at goal. I said the previous one was a sealer, and that's the icing on the cake. Richardson's third goal. Collingwood 19-12, 126. Fitzroy 12-17-89. Sevens Big League is part of the 1984 Nissan VFL Premiership season. Well, with Lynn, the match at the first three changes and the four points the difference at three-quarter time, but Collingwood with a superb last quarter. They kicked ten goals five to the Lions, four goals three, and they ran out winners by 46 points. The goal kickers now, and for Collingwood, Mark Williams got six. He got three of those in about the first 15 minutes of the game. A great uh, five goals by youngster Ian McMullen and three goals to Richardson. For Fitzroy, their goal kickers Bernie Quinlan three and two each to Loken, Osborne, Pert, Sidebottom and Scott. In the statistics, Collingwood on top in all departments except the free kicks and hitouts. You're watching a special edition of Sevens Big League. We'll be back with interviews in just a moment. Core of 
rich caramel surrounded by smooth vanilla, then lavishly coated with dark chalk and biscuit, all on a special chewy caramel stick. It's amazing. It's so sweet. It's great. It's safe by far. It's new. It's all so new. When you have a ball, you can hang it up, hold it up, fill it up, stand it up. You can does it all when you have a ball. You can store away, put away, wipe away, hide away, make it stay. For me to fill up, good, it's easy to remove. Plastic blue tag does it all. Have a ball. million dollars worth of voting at prices you've been waiting 10 years for. Why don't you walk right into David Jones? The business shirts and suits so distinctive, so David Jones. Our buyers travel the fashion world to bring back a range of designs and colors you'll see nowhere else with quality like nowhere else. The finest in fabrics, tailoring and European styling will fit you Fuss over you. We'll make business a pleasure. And that's a promise. Because there's no one store like David Jones. The girls, the gangs, and rock and roll. All you needed was a jacket, a comb, and a good pair of fists. The Wanderers. It's Greece with Brass Knuckles, starring Ken Wall and Karen Allen in the Wednesday movie premiere at 8.30 on 7. So it was Collingwood victorious by 46 points and naturally the scenes in the Collingwood dressing rooms after the game, they, all, they were very, very happy indeed. Our reporter at the match, Stephen Phillips. Well, Carlton and Collingwood at VFL Park next Saturday, the, the great traditional rivals in VFL football. One man who helped Collingwood get into the first semi-final was centre man Jeff Rains and Jeff, you must have been surprised at the way you ran away from Fitzroy after such a tough game all day. Mm. Yeah, I suppose it was a little bit of a surprise, Stephen, but uh, I thought at half-time that uh, it, was a, you know, it was a very, very hard-fought game. I just thought if we could kept, keep applying the pressure, we'd uh, get on top, and as it worked out, we did. You must have been surprised at the success of a couple of young fellows who we haven't seen much of. Yes, well, not surprised, but, uh, you know, it's always hard in the final. I thought Ian McMullen uh, handled himself very, very well. He shows a lot of skill. Um, Mullane on the wing, he played very, very well and, uh, you know, it's always nice to have these up-and-coming uh, boys to come into the side. As it turned out, it was handy having Wes Fellows on the bench when he swung onto the ground, he took some of the sting out of Matt Rendell. Yes, Matt was playing very well early and uh, he's playing that kick behind the game and uh, I think the instructions were for Wes to, to man up with him and I thought Wes uh, played very well on him after half-time. While well, Jeff Rains was one of the best of field, it didn't come easy for another first gamer, Collingwood coach John Cale. John, you seemed to get the break a number of times during the game. They kept pegging you back. Did you feel that you'd finally get the break and run away with it? No, I didn't feel that, Steve. Um, in finals, you, you never know. You know, the games are so tight and they can swing either way in five minutes. We were just hoping that if we persisted and we just bore at the body all day and kept running hard, that we may find them out. They've been on a high for six weeks and we knew that we could play better than we did the last time we played them so we just hung in and persisted and eventually you know some some players came into the game mcmullen uh, abernathy the running players created uh, nifty shaw uh, tony shaw so overall i i thought it was just the team started to get on top and once they got the, the momentum up you know it, uh, it just steamrolled lou richard said before the game that he thought it was collingwood's best looking side for the year you had a good balance of youth with some older players as well. Yes, we did. Uh, we took a few punts, but uh, it was calculated risk. We've been with the players all the year. We knew who could do what. And the seconds did well today, Steve. So, you know, next week, who knows what we come up with. Ian McMullen, a dream debut with five goals. But what about your debut in VFL oh, finals? Look, I was really nervous before. Uh, nervous and a lot of pressure because... My first finals, I really wanted to win a finals over here and um, prove that we can coach in finals. Not that that's anything, I, I doubt that I wouldn't have an ego problem that way, but I wanted to win for the players and for Collingwood and their supporters and for myself, of course. It was then announced the venues for the matches next weekend. Carlton to play Collingwood at VFL Park on Saturday and the Sunday game at the MCG, a replay of last year's grand final, Hawthorne 
versus Essendon. However, insofar as Collingwood was concerned, that created quite a few problems. Stephen Phillips has that story. The Magpies claim that the draw is unfair, and with me I've got Collingwood General Manager Peter Bain. Peter, you've already been to see Alan Arlott. In fact, you've just finished talking to him. What is the basis of your complaint? Well, uh, we, d we don't believe that the side uh, drawn to play next week on, on the Saturday should have played this Sunday. The other two sides in the other finals uh, aren't affected in any way whatsoever. But to expect our boys to come up well after a big game like today, next Saturday, is just not satisfactory. There's too much involved in winning these finals and uh, the players must be at their absolute peak for their supporters. There's a lot of emotion involved and they need that relaxation to bring them back to their top. Sevens Big League is part of the 1984 Nissan VFL Premiership season. A quick check on the goal kickers now. Bernie Quinlan finished the season with a very creditable tally of 105 goals. Lee Matthews got six yesterday for a season's tally so far of 70. You're watching Sevens Big League, the Elimination Final Edition. We'll be back with more details in just a minute. There's a gutsy Williams goal from Williams. Great now it's Harms and when Williams, down he goes. Has a chance now for Williams, he's got it. Oh, great play, that's what they call sheer determination. And then it's on behind play with Sheldon collecting reins. He's a gutsy play. On the Perovic, it's on behind play, Pete. It is two. Harms and Abernethy. Play still continues down towards the goal square and not through by Reed for one more. Williams. Well, here's where tragedy struck. He went down on that shoulder, Williams. And out popped the collarbone. And of course, Unfortunately, the Collingwood skipper this. having to leave the ground. Williams coming up with a arm or a the bad handball from Val Perovic. Straight to Abernethy. And away he scoots up to Fellows. There's a pass out there to Fellows. He got it. Coming in to meet him Little He's Fraser Murphy the meets the Michael the Taylor the illegal. Point. Is the steal of the day. Dean puts the Blues in front. A beautiful pass from Gary Shaw. And a good pressure mark by Dacos. There's some marvellous individual efforts in the third term. Here's Dacos out of the pack. And I think Pete almost gives us a smile here too. Punched Richardson off hand, bolts around. He bolts, gets around Reed. Now he straightens up, fires. And there's another one to Collingwood. Richardson there's the magpie forward. machine in motion. Melbourne Richardson, Richardson the Reigns, combining with Banks yes, and Dacos. Another beautiful kick. That's a good 55 metres up towards the centre half forward position. Banks, he's clear. He shepherded. He can shoot. He's gone for a hand pass. Dacos must make it five. This time he has. Right Into the final term now, Richardson bursts away again with a couple of bounces. Long to Neville Shaw, and he finds Dacos again. Collingwood running, Neville Shaw, no one within 10 metres, chips it up the full forward. Dacos is there, can he make it six? Gets around Reed, shoots, it's coming round, it's there, I think, for mine. Goal, six to Dacos. Into the full forward. Richardson, Richardson again, yes, passes into the square, races in. gives it to Over Ronnie Andrews. And Ronnie signals, missed, signals to all at Collingwood <laughs> by simply giving the thumb of Cooperine. Highlights. And let's see how the Bombers blasted their way into the grand final. The first term, Watson and Baker combined. But out to Neagle. There's Neagle on the run now, the Van der Hart. As he comes around that half forward line. Another hand pass to Van der Hart. The Flying Dutchman fires at the goal. And it's good, it's a goal. Skipper it, Danaher. Baker reads it beautifully off Almost the pack. Almost to mark, here's Baker for goal number two. Couldn't miss it from there, and he has it. Two goals to Baker, and this is a light in the first turn. The forward once more. 40 seconds Taylor later, he's there Collins again. Nice ball. Baker An easy goal. goal. Three, 30 metres out, bang, there it is. And Baker is a light VFL pass. And Isn't it became a little casual as Thompson the finds Vanderhaar. Van Lobs it at goal, and has put it through, I think. Yes, he had. Kick a chance for the Maggies, not a lot went mark. right. Oh, he dropped an easy one. Oh, what a chance. It was the chance of a oh. lifetime. They all missed Morwood that one. Morwood has it stolen. Again by Baker. Baker. Snaps it goal. It's going pretty close. 
I think it'll be another goal to make, and that's goal number four. Sure it's good left. play by Mike Richardson. Smothers it, traps it well, Pinched and finds Rugged Ronnie, one of the few that Ronnie really Andrew. tried for Collingwood. Three. Andrews plays on. Oh, what pace. Andrews shoots at goal. Can he make it three? Oh, Ronnie's done it. What a great one-handed effort of Paul from Lou Richards. It's probably deserved. Ronnie, a smile on his face. Oh, <laughs> Billy saying, how did exactly you do that? Thing, They're acting like it's a Sunday afternoon pick. Come on. About Back with the action. And there's a little rip, let go. You see that one? Richardson and Clark. And then the offer comes in from Billy. Shall we dance? No, says Ronnie. Here's Vander with the great leap. He couldn't hold it. Now Danaher. Up and down, but look at the recovery. That's his third. There coming up to Danaher. Vanderhaar here after, crashes into David it. Toomey right now. And finally, Tony Short down he goes. Vanderhaar coming off. Leaves the ground, but by all reports, will be set to go next week. And that's where Clark went down. As Williams goals. Let's have a look at it again in slow motion. You can see there. Down he goes. But quite okay after the game. Piece of work there to knock that ball on, and uh, he really set that goal up, and uh, must have popped one as he did it. Into the last quarter, the Magpies literally run, run out of their boots. Well, he certainly can't do a thing right, and the Magpies said it's out of bounds. He's kicked his boot further than the ball. He hasn't had many kicks, so he wouldn't have heard much practice. Peter Bradbury decides to clear the ground. Whether that was the right thing to do or not, we don't know. Up towards their centre half forward position. Oh, Harvey! Well, 19 goals up, and still the Bombers fly. Harvey gets offloaded. Harvey's hurt from that one. Yeah, he doesn't look too good. A shot of goal in the middle. Is hard. By is hard is true. I think yes, it is. I think he landed on his head, Bob, too. And that's about a dozen marks to the Essendon skipper. Danaher. Look at the combination here. He finds Thompson. Thompson on the run at half forward. Tries to get around two. Back to Thompson. Gets it and turn over the. Baker back to Tottenham, runs into trouble. On the Madden, and there he is again. Madden. From last Sunday, Merv Neagle of Essendon. And another one from Neagle. Doesn't take the mark, Neagle's off, he can score from there. Long shot by the Essendon centre man is a goal. Now Robert Dipier Domenico. Dipier Domenico right down there in the forward pocket. Spins out of the pack beautifully, straightens up, fires it for the goals, and that'll be through. What a beauty by Dippy Dipier Domenico. A river. And here's the third one from Merv Neagle. He doesn't take the mark. Neagle's off. He can score from there. Long shot by the Essendon centre man is a goal. So two goals to Neagle. That's what you're calling two and one for Merv. Now Darren Williams. Williams. He fires with the right foot. Any score puts Essendon in front. Hit the post, did it, or is it a goal? It's a goal. Having a great battle. Again, Robert Dipier Domenico. Comes out to Dipier Domenico. A hurried shot of goal. Oh, I think he's put it through for a goal. And, do the and Ken Judge for the Hawks. He's found Judge. Judge trying to get under the right foot to shoot for goal, which he does. Any score will put Hawthorne in front. I think he's put it through for a goal. That's three goals to judge. They all now to yesterday's one. preliminary the final. Ball. Firstly, Baker Leon Baker. Goal. It's going pretty close. And I think it'll be another goal to Baker. That's goal number... Then he's gone for a pass down... Collingwood's Ronnie Andrews. Andrews. Mark number three. Andrews plays on. Oh, what pace. Andrews shoots at goal. Can he make it three? Oh, Ronnie's done it. Put it. Oh, His Andrews. teammate, uh, Gary Shaw. Knock on to Gary Shaw. A good shepherd by Andrews. Shaw's long shot. Bounces through. Essendon skipper Terry seat. Danaher. Great down. recovery. Has the goal coming up, another goal to Danaher. That's his third. And Watson. if the forwards can do it, so too can the defence. Here's Nobby Clark. Beautiful long kick will be a score. It's a goal. To our panel now, headed by Peter McKenna. Well, Bob, I think the uh, thing that stood out there, the reflexes of the modern day players. I know you would think they had them in your day too, but the, the quickness of getting that um, ball to boot. Yes, I think uh, the most impressive aspect there was the, the second goal of Merv Nagels, the way he took the ball off the hands of the pack and then straightened up as he weaved past players. The snap of Darren Williams and uh, also Ken Judge. Well, he saw some nice goals again yesterday, but uh, I felt that the one of, or either one of Deep Peter Menico's, uh, when he picked it up on the boundary and was able to steady, and uh, then the, the recovery, just the way he was able to snap that one over his shoulder the second, but uh, the first goal of Deep Peter Menico's, I felt. Well, a hundred goal kicker with Geelong in how many seasons, Sam? Right, oh, well, I gave the second. Uh, you didn't answer that. How no, many well, seasons? Well, I wasn't in the goal kicking area. How many seasons did you play 18. to kick your hundred? Right, go on. 
was a little bit. <laughs> Nagel, I gave uh, the second goal of Nagel's was an excellent goal. Um, Nobby Clark there in the last half. Oh, that is really low, what's low known trajectory. as sinking the slipper into a ball. He kicked that very solidly. Timing there. was beautiful. And beautiful. the two ones of Robert D. Pierre Domenico. I must say I liked the second one because he uh, kicked it. It was a bit of a fluke. It was under pressure and sealed the game for them nearly. But his first one was more deliberate, so I agree with you, Robert. Well, he, he kicked some match-winning goals. Uh, Robert D. Pierre Domenico last week, of course, uh, against Essendon at the MCG. And Robert is the unanimous choice of the panel to win the hundred dollars for the goal of the day and of course he goes into the competition for the five thousand dollar award for the goal of the year now you'll have a look at birdie here as he rose beautifully at the back of the pack just taps the ball on nicely to keep control of the ball this is of course the midas mufflers award as we see it in the forward pocket he's still got control of the ball now an Essendon player comes yeah, Paul Vanderhaar oh, Vanderhaar what a mark he picked up by Ricky Barham out it comes towards the slider Ricky Barham. that's a great falling mark by, uh, by his teammate points. Dennis Banks flying high as Banks there's a great mark there's Collingwood's Greg Banks. Phillips Bradbury goes directly down the ground at the back of Phillips there to take the mark he has tried right and his teammate Ron line. Andrews oh, <laughs> Even had a bit of a grin at that one. Now Ricky Barham again. And also again, Merv Neagle. To our panel, headed by one of the great high marks of all time, Lou Richards. Well, we've got three of the greatest high marks of all time sitting here. And of course, we've won three Brandlow medals between the three of us too. Not a bad effort. Not a bad effort. What's your choice of the... Uh, what year did you win it, Lou? Don't say, don't bring that up. We've got three between us. Leave it at that. Now, what did you think of the marks? Well, I was certainly like Merv Neagles. I thought that was a fantastic yes. mark, a very classical mark. Uh, Van Haas, of course, uh, was an excellent mark, running backwards. And Ricky Barham's, uh, the sliding mark, I think that's a typical Ricky Barham one. But uh, certainly for getting up high, eyes on the ball, I like Merv Neagles. What do you call a classical mark? Well, one that comes from behind, puts the knee in the back, gets the right, hangs in the air, one grab. And, uh, Robert, uh, one of the lowest marks of all times. Well, in 16 seasons, with my feet off the ground and my hands overhead, I took one. One mark. So I reckon that's uh, that qualifies good enough for to this qualify show. me for this. Uh, He's overqualified, I'd say. I thought yeah. uh, Merv Nagel's first mark was an, uh, a sensational mark. Classical. Vanderhaar showed courage to back back and keep his eye on the ball. Dennis Banks coming over the top was a, a good mark. And Greg Phillips, uh, that to me is a classical mark. Eye on the ball, Fingers watching out it all, it's all the time. But uh, Merv Nagel's mark last week was a ripper. The voice is getting a bit croaky, Bob. Did you have a late night? You wouldn't give me one of those uh, <laughs> strepsils. OK, a uh, mark of the day goes to Merv Nagel's first mark, a great mark, and we watch him in action now. Up to midfield. Chance for Ireland to go through O'Donnell. The crowd roars. Over to Kerrigan. That looks over the bar. That's better. Gary Pert. Over the top to Platten. Gets around O'Shea. Clapping's kick is a good one. Bradley, plenty of opposition. Robbie Flower, oh, dodged that tackle beautifully. Flower shoots at goal, and that looks pretty good for Australia. Up to midfield, and Barty Rock. I can have to run now. You'll get around Russell Green, and that was brilliantly done. Yes, good grab. And a chance for Ireland. Going in is McNichol. And a goal! Kicked by O'Rourke. Spillade to midfield. Austin, caught. It's with a one uh, tackle. And the Irish fans roar now as it's uh, taken by Kerrigan. Oh! Australian goalie collects. Uh, that was Martin down there. The mark was taken by Roach. Very close to the sideline. And some rough attention being beaded out. It could be on again. Yes, it is. Here we go. And uh, we have it all in Donny Brook. I'll use the phrase again. Fires it out. A chance for an Australian goal. Bradley. Oh, great save by O'Leary. Great save by O'Leary. And now Ireland run the ball well. It goes to Blaney. It's clear of Danaher. Up to midfield. Hardy and McNichol. McNichol's had the better of that duel, I think, so far. He's got great pace. Just about upset by Hardy. The corners play on a long way. The handball. Beautiful knockback. Chance for Ireland. And the score... From O'Rourke, the number nine is Jared Healy at the 13 metre line, hooks it in towards the parallelogram. Kernahan over the top, shoots three points to Australia. When the mark is made, the Australian stays on the spot. Ireland aren't doing that. That's a great kick, it's a goal! It doesn't matter if it comes off the hands or not. 
Australia badly needing a score here. Kernahan, oh, tips it beautifully. Kernahan, oh, Robbie Flair, he's a shot for the Australian goal. Flair, yeah, six points to Australia. Walsh, Walsh just shook the 65 metre line. Now he's on it, he's clear. Tierney. As I said before, I like the style of this fellow. It looks good from here over the top for three points. Looking for Glenn Denning. On to Flower. Good pop away by Glenn Denning. Flower over the top. Malaxos tries to get around O'Shea. He'll go for three points and he gets them. Austin pushing and shoving. Spillane or two island plays collide. It's a goal. No, over the top. It's over, I think. That'll win the game for Ireland. Yes, and it did too, to the margin of four points. Duty. Oh, come on, Sheriff. That's one I can say for you vultures. I resent that, Sheriff. It is my duty and civic responsibility to see to it that these assets that you mentioned don't vanish before they reach the city treasurer's office. Furthermore, and in addition... Please. Yeah. Now, Sheriff, who was it told you where to dig? Nobody. Just prospecting around. <laughs> With a piece of stick. <laughs> I say that you brought this thing out here to confuse us. And I say that that horse told you where to dig. That horse showed me nothing. Then why'd you turn him loose?